Welcome to another episode of the Caribbean Edge Kids. We're so sorry we started late today. That has never happened, but some technical issues. So we're going to dive in and welcome you to this wonderful Sunday afternoon. Um, joining us today, we do have Auntie Sophie, of course, and she'll be reading for us. We have five-year-old Kylie. Hi, Kylie. <laughs> and we have Leon as well joining us, five-year-old Leon, both reading for us today. And we have Zia joining the Caribbean Edge Kids today. Good morning. And she's representing in our colors this morning, her Jamaican colors. Nice to see you again, Zia. Okay, so Zia is going to start us off this morning. Um, so you take it over, Zia. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you gave us. Lord, I hope you bless all the children who is in the hospital and keep them safe and let them be home safely. Bless my friends and the children and my teachers so they don't get the corona. Bless Miss Dawn, Auntie Sophie, Leon, and Kylie and me so when we do our thing. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, Zia, for that beautiful blessing on this Sunday afternoon. You are beautiful, phenomenal, and amazing. And you sent me the sweetest message last week. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you. You're welcome. And she has something special in store for us later on in the show. So stay tuned. And we do have Leon that wants to read first for us. He's five years old. So Leon, tell us what you would like um, to be when you grow up. A paleontologist so I could study dinosaur fossils. Okay, so tell us how you got into that, Leon. <laughs> so I have a lot. <laughs> so I know Leon is five years old. He loves dinosaurs. He collects dinosaurs. So let us see your dinosaur, Leon. Good. So you are going back in history and you're going to be digging up all those archives and bringing them to life and educating people, right? You're going to study fossils. There you go. Wow. Show you the okay. okay. Beautiful, Leon. So, um, Leon, what book do you have to read for us today? Slam and Dunk and the Big Game, written by Chris Sawyers and illustrated by Dennis Huckman. This is Slam, and this is Dunk. Slam and Dunk are pals. Slam and Dunk like to play basketball. It's the big game of the Bobcats. Hi, kids, yell Slam's mom and dad, and Dunk's mom and dad. Then the Bobcats come in. The Bobcats are big. The Bobcats will win, says Dunk. No, we will win, says Slam. You are not big, Dunk, but you can run and get the ball to me. I am big. I can slam lots of shots. The game is on. Slam has a shot. The ball hits the rim. It's a miss. 
Will Wildcats get the ball? A Bobcat has a shot. Bam, it's in the net. That's two for the Bobcats. Slam and dunk and the Bobcats play and play. It's 10 for slam and dunk and 10 for the Bobcats. Dunk runs and get the ball to slam. Slam jams the ball into the net. Bam, the game is up. Slam and dunk win. Thanks, Wildcat. Sage, Slam and Dunk. Thanks, Slam and Dunk. Sage, the Bobcats will a game. The end. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> so thank you for that, Leon. Um, and very interesting. Leon is um, the five-year-old of Lionel and Carrie Ann Berry. So thank you for sharing. Leon with us um, to help inspire, continue to educate other young readers as well. So his mom shared with me that he didn't always like to read and just recently started reading with the encouragement of his, his teachers from Bethlehem Junior Academy. So he's only been reading probably for fluently like this for about six months now. So Leon, you are definitely inspiring other young kids that don't like to read, along with their parents and their teacher support to show us that you can start reading at any time and be fluent and it definitely will help you in your career as well. So thanks for reading for us on the Caribbean Edge. Thank Street. you, Miss. <laughs> You're, You're so welcome. welcome. <laughs> so Kylie joins us as well. And Kylie Ray Spence is also five years old. And Kylie, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a surgeon. A surgeon. And what's your favorite subject? My favorite subject is science oh. and maths. And maths as well. And you like gymnastics for fun too, right? Yes. Yes, yeah, see? Auntie Don knows a lot about you. <laughs> so your parents are Peter Gay Thomas and Mr. Andrew Spence? Yes, Mr. Andrew Thomas. And what school do you go to? I go to Bethlehem Preschool. Oh, well, thanks for joining us today. What book do you have to read for us today? I have the book I'm going to be reading. is I'm a Pretty Princess. Oh. What is made by Crystal Swain Bates. Made by Crystal Swain Bates. My name is Michaela and I'm a princess. I wear high heel shoes and a pink and blue dress. I have a tiara I wear on my head. I like it so much that I wear it to bed. I have my own one and it's can be also bright. You can still see it still see it after you turn off the light. We live in a castle that's far, far away. In a land where rainbow color unicorns play. The king is my father. The queen is my mother. Prince Alexander is my little brother. Mommy and daddy both have sparkly crowns. Daddy wears a red cape. Mommy wears fancy gowns. <laughs> Our family pictures are up on the wall. I like looking at them when I skip down the hall. I have a pet goldfish. I call Mr. Blue. He's the king of the sea. So he wears a crown too. 
Tea party are flight with Sierra and Bree. We eat strawberries, cupcakes, and drink fancy tea. To be a good princess, there are things I must do. There are there are things I must do. I must be kind to others. Say please and thank you. Clean up my room if I make a big mess. Put away my toys and hang up my dress. When I finish my list at the end of the day, I'm really proud of that I can say it's not my castle. My one or the dress that I'm in. What makes me a princess is what lies within. So even if you don't have a crown, a wand, a big castle, or a long fancy gown, I bet if you look in the mirror to 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 you'll see a pretty princess looking right back at you. Oh <laughs> the end. <laughs> thank you. And I see a beautiful princess looking right back at us. So thank you for that, Kylie. You're welcome, Auntie Dawn. <laughs> Why did you pick that book? Because it's about princesses, and my mom always says I'm a princess. You absolutely are. Your mom is so right. Thank you. And you are only five years old, and you're impacting and inspiring other young girls just like you to read. <laughs> so thank you. You're welcome, Auntie Dawn. Thank you. We have lots in store for you. Auntie Sophie, tell us how you feel about our two young readers, Leon and Kylie, this morning. Uh, listen to me, at five years old, that's very impressive. Can you hear me, Auntie Dawn? Yes. Yes, thank you. I am very impressed at five years old for these little ones to be reading and reading with such emphasis. So, of course, Leon talked about the, the, the dunk, what is it, slam dunk? That means Leon probably likes to play basketball. And of course, Miss Kylie, I am a pretty princess. Great choices, parents, good books, and we encourage you to continue to help the young ones stay interested in reading. So we, kudos to the parents, and we thank you too, young readers. We're gonna hear so much more about you as time progresses, right? Keep reading. <laughs> Wonderful. You guys are so well dressed this morning. Thanks for dressing up. Most kids are probably out there just lounging around. I think Leon has his hands up in school. What's up, Leon? I have a, I have a, I play baseball, but I don't have a baseball book. You have ah, a you, thanks for the, well, thanks for the correction, Leon. You play baseball, I have a but you don't car. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks for sharing that anyway <laughs> all right and then we have Zia who sang for us last week so beautiful um get rid of COVID-19 absolutely get rid of all the bad spirits everything bad going on and today started us off with prayer praying for everyone on this panel praying for the world so thank you beautiful Zia and what treat do you have in store for us, Zia? Uh, so the national dish, the Jamaican dish is ucky and shellfish. And my fun fact is I like the beach and I like this, I like chronics. And my favorite song of Chronics is I Likes, I Can, and Jamaica, my Jamaica. And I like balls. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so who is going to eat the Aki and Saltfish? 
But my oh. mom, I don't like acting and so <laughs> so mommy and daddy gonna eat the ackee and saltfish, which is the yeah. national dish. So thank you. So we asked Thea this week to tell us some fun facts about Jamaica, along with her parents' help. And she's dressed in the beautiful, rich island colors, representing well this morning. Um, you are so beautiful. There you go. Yeah, Jamaica all the way. And as a lot of people... There you go, Jamaica. She's so <laughs> proud of being Jamaican. Thank you. And we like your fun facts. Love them, especially our national dish, which most of us that grew up in Jamaica love. I know a lot of American kids um, with uh, Caribbean heritage more prefer scramble eggs and pancakes. <laughs> but we grew up on that. Um, but, you know, a lot of people know because they see it all over so social media that we just had Emancipation Day celebrating freedom, um, mental freedom as well. And that um, we are so much this whole week, people are just celebrating across Jamaica, across the world, Jamaicans, because we're so proud of our strong Jamaican culture. Our reggae music is international, worldwide. We can't forget about Bob Marley. Um, our boat, like Zia mentioned, our strong athletes that come from Jamaica. Our strong people, because we're out of many one people, that's our Jamaican motto. Um, so between reggae, our people, our culture, if you have Jamaican friends, you know how um, hardworking they are in the community community how pro they are and independent they are so jamaica has so much pride and so much to be thankful for as we continue our independent celebration all week long probably all month every day of the year we celebrate right auntie sophie that's, that's right, right. <laughs> so we're going to switch over to auntie sophie who is in one of our jamaican cultural dresses if you ever visit jamaica you'll see a lot of people wearing the outfits or similar outfits to what Auntie Sophie is wearing today at the hotels um, and singing and welcoming all our guests to our beautiful island. So we're going to see what Auntie Sophie has in store for us today. All right. Well, thank you, Auntie Dawn. And thank you again, kids. Thank you, parents, for tuning in. And of course, as I said, encourage the reading, encourage your little ones to learn more about our very, 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 big island. It's not tiny. It's the third largest island in the Caribbean. So encourage little ones to read and learn about our island and how proud we are. Yes, Emancipation Day was yesterday. And of course, the independence of our nation is August 6th. So bear with us, little ones. We're going to be celebrating all week. Okay. So today I'm going to read for you a story and a Nancy story which of course I did two series before on Anansi Stories. And of course, I want to remind you that Anansi Stories originated in West Africa. They were brought to Jamaica and other parts of the New World by Ashanti slaves. And they were handed down orally through generations. Anansi exists as a spider or a man or a combination of the two. And his name is sometimes spelled Anansi, you know, the, instead of saying A-N-A-N-S-I, A-N-A-N-C-Y. And his stories are called Anansi stories. So let me go right into my Anansi story of choice today. And this one is called Anansi and the Yam Hills by Michael Ord. Once in a long time, there lived an old woman who had magical powers. Her name was Five. She was also so evil that some people called her a witch. Five hated her name. No one knows why her parents named her the number Five. When she was a child, other children would make fun of her name. Sometimes when she was within earshot, they would look out of the corner of their eyes and giggle as they said, give me a five. They would slap their hands with a quick handshake and burst out laughing. This taunting always made five angry. When she grew up, 
five decided to put an end to the name calling. So she created a weird spell. Anyone who says five will drop dead, she said. Then she changed her mind. From this day on, anyone who says five will disappear. This spell immediately caused a problem in the country. No one could say that number again without disappearing. Children could no longer recite their five times tables. village, the lucky number was no longer 13. Once a customer asked the merchant, how much is that blue t-shirt? That shirt is a five. D Suddenly there was a loud swoosh. Before the merchant could finish his sentence, he disappeared right in front of the dumbfounded customer's eyes. A crafty spider named Anansi lived in Five's village. He had heard about the witch's spell. Times were very hard. Anansi was not a farmer and he had no food at all to eat. His wife and children were starving. Since Anansi was small and not a very good worker, he could only rely on his brain to get whatever he needed to survive. He said to himself, things are tough, boy. I must make this witch's spell work for me. And Nancy went to the road that led to the village's marketplace. He chose a spot on the side of the road where everyone on the way to the market would have to pass. There near a large guangu tree, he decided to pile up five mounds of the rich brown soil. These mounds he called yam hills. In the top of each yam hill, he planted an African yellow yam. Then he drove a stake next to the yam on which its vine could grow. Anansi carefully watered the yams until each one began to sprout. Anansi made a web like a hammock in the guango tree and patiently waited for someone to come by. Early one morning after each yam shoot had poked its head out of the mound, Anansi sat down next to his yam hills. Soon brother Dog came by on his way to the market. Dog balanced a banker basket of sweet smelling fruits on his head as he walked down the road. Good morning, brother Dog, said Anansi in a sugary voice. I know that you are busy and I feel so stupid. I am not an educated man like you. Would you help me to count how many yam hills that I have planted here? And Nancy asked. You should have gone to school to learn how to count, Brother Dog said grumpily as he walked away from Anansi towards the market. Anansi climbed up into the guango tree and waited. The next person to come by was Brother Bull. He carried large basket of fruits on his head. Good day, Brother Bull, Anansi said in a sad voice. Could you just spare me one minute? Anansi begged. What can I do for you, Anansi? Brother Bull asked. I was a yiki and sickly child. So my parents did not send me to school. I never learned my ABCs. I planted all these yam hills. Can you help me to count them? Anansi said. But of course, Anansi, Brother Bull replied. You have one, two, three, four, five. Swoosh. As he said that number, Brother Bull disappeared into thin air. The basket of sweet, ripe fruits that he had been carrying on his head fell to the ground. And Nancy snatched up the basket of fruits and rushed home to eat them all. For a long time, Nancy did very well, tricking some passerby into counting his yam hills. 
He grew fat from all the baskets of food he had stolen from everyone. He tricked brothers Turtle, Owl, Mongoose, Hare, Peeny Wally the Flyer Fly, and even the tough brother Scorpion. Mrs. Guinea Fowl was a nice young mother of newly hatched children. She could not say no to anyone. She and her husband shared the chore of selling their produce in the village. That day, it was her turn to go to the marketplace. She loaded up her hand basket and headed for the market. As she got closer to the yam hills, Anansi was nowhere in sight. Just as she was about to pass yam hill number four, Anansi the spider lowered himself down from his perch in the guango tree. He called out in his sugary voice, Good morning, Mrs. Guinea Fowl. Could you help me with a problem? Of course, Anansi, the polite Mrs. Guinea Fowl said. I have these yam hills here, and I don't know how to count. Would you please help me, please? Anansi begged Mrs. Guinea Fowl, who had seen Anansi's trick. She saw him trick Brother Scorpion, and she walked over to the last yam hill and climbed up on top of it. She said, you have one, two, three, four, and the one I'm standing on. What? What are you doing? That is not the way you count, Anansi shouted angrily. What do you mean, Anansi? Mrs. Guinea Fowl said. I don't know any number called the one I'm standing on. Start and again, Anansi ordered. Start again. Mrs. Guinea Fowl began again. You have one, two, three, four, and the one I'm standing on. That is not what you're supposed to say, Anansi shouted even more angrily. Well, if you are smart, what am I supposed to say, Mrs. Guinea Fowl asked. And Nancy shouted, you're supposed to say one, two, three, four, five, whoops. Suddenly, a Nancy disappeared, leaving Mrs. Guinea Fowl with all the loot that he had gotten from tricking his victims. Now that is the end. And I say, Jack Mandora, me not choose none. And see how tricky brother Nancy was. Now, Auntie Dawn, the Jamaican moral of this story is greedy choke puppy or a greedy puppy will soon choke. So have you ever seen a puppy eat so fast and so much that it may sometimes choke? Similarly, it was a Nancy's greed that got him into trouble. The end. What a beautiful story. <laughs> So we love Auntie Sophie. I love Auntie Sophie. What about you guys? Do you love her? Thanks, Leah. Love her, Kylie. Leon. So <laughs> that was a bad story because everyone disappeared. Disappeared. They disappeared. <laughs> On that story. So. On, on the count of five, they disappeared. On the count of five, but Nancy <laughs> got tricked this time, so he disappeared. So your parents, you know, one of the beautiful things about what Auntie Sophie does is bring that culture, the island stories that we grew up on, so that the, the culture continues, even no matter where you live around the world, you get to see some of the folktale stories that we grew up on in Jamaica. So we definitely love and appreciate Auntie Sophie, who reads for us on Sundays, and as she continues to educate and inspire and bring that island culture that we miss so much at times. <laughs> so, and I forget to mention Zia's parents, Kadeen and William Williams, thank you so much for sharing your beautiful, amazing daughter with us. This is our third time on the Caribbean Edge uh, kids shows, so we definitely appreciate her talents. And all our kids are welcome back to sing and dance and laugh with us. We thank all the viewers that certainly tuned in, a lot of comments going on. 
from the Brazilian friend Anna who plays volleyball, from Miss Lena Lindo and Nicole Nathan, everyone saying way to go Kylie, way to go, great job Leon as well and go Zia, mommy's tuning in watching you guys and Dr. Rupert Francis as well says great show, wonderful show, Don and Auntie Sophie, very important for this show. So we want to thank our sponsors, which is Bethlehem Preschool Junior Academy. As you can see from them, these are brilliant five, six-year-olds that have come on so far from that school as we continue to remind everyone how important reading is and how inspiring our children are to us all. Any parting words from any of the kids? Thank you for having us. I hope I can see you guys again. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You're welcome, Kylie. Thank you for having me. Yes. And we're looking forward to your growth. We're looking forward to your future because you're smart and you're beautiful and you're amazing. Auntie Sophie. Thank well, you. You, you you're very welcome again. Congratulations to the parents because we have to encourage you. Kudos to the parents to continue to help these little ones to appreciate reading. So Leon, Kylie, and my Zia, thank you all so much. What good we say in Jamaica? So, yes, Bye, viewers. Thanks for tuning in to the Caribbean Edge Kids. What good? What good? Celebrate Jamaica's independence August 6th. Got it. Happy so. independence. Bye-bye.